Let's put up the picture. Imagine a school teacher posting something like this. All right, you see this? A middle school teacher at General Smallwood Middle School in Maryland was caught posting several photos of herself in Confederate gear, posing in front of the Confederate flag and showing a white power salute. You're looking at the photos from Facebook. All right. Is this in line with the Charles Charles County Public Schools social media policy for employees? The person writes, question mark. In it, Smallwood Middle School substitute teacher Kathleen Sturgill makes a white power salute. Now, obviously, we will say, well, that's a problem. This person should not be around children, right? Diotha Sweat, a representative of the NAACP, spoke to the local news and said, and I quote, it is unfortunate that in 2022, we are still dealing with racial hatred, particularly from a school teacher. The plot thickens. The parents have been demanding the district remove the teacher, but the school has pushed back. Let's put up the principal, okay? So according to Various reports, the principal, the school system, they're pushing back on removing the teacher. That principal you're looking at is Brenda Tillotson. She issued a statement on November 7th advising the teacher did not violate the school's social media policy. The principal says the teacher removed the offending post, but the school would not comment. All right, that's how you wanna play it, principal. I promise you a comment this week, guarantee you that, there's more. The statement read in part, it is a priority to me that all students feel safe and welcome at school, are comfortable to exercise free expression and understand that not all people share their likes, thoughts, opinions, or views. What kind of statement is that? That's insane. The principal's secretary, Mrs. Long, said she could speak on the principal's behalf, uh, but would not address the public. Our top priority, this is a quote, our top priority right now is the students. So we're really only concerned with corresponding with parents. We're focused on the students, so we're corresponding with parents. That was a direct quote they gave us at Indisputable. Um, School teacher flashes white power, puts it on social media, decides to wear Confederate gear. Okay, you have a right to do that, madam. You don't have a right to teach our children. You see, that's not a right. Obviously, this is a significant violation of public trust. There's always a morals clause when you are an educator. I used to be a K through 12 educator myself. Now damn it, this doesn't make sense. If you get a traffic ticket and you happen to be a black man working as a school teacher, you gotta explain that to your principal. And you may still get suspended if you were a super speeder. But obviously here, you can be racist in this particular jurisdiction. You can post it, it can be reviewed publicly by students, parents, and no action, the NAACP. They have been trying to get your attention and you decided not to respond. Well, here's your opportunity to do the right thing, be an advocate for children. Stop standing up and protect the racism. All right, Doc, what are your thoughts here? Schools are such flashpoints right now, really particularly around these issues. And I really, the question that comes to the top of my mind is who gets to talk about race in the context of schools? Um, if this teacher had gotten up and taught a lesson on critical race theory, that person, there, I don't think there would have been any debate, right? The whole right. system would have would have gone against her. Um, but really what she was doing was illustrating the need for critical race theory. The minute yeah. we take out any kind of critical conversation about race, which is a complex and charged topic. Um, but the minute we take away people's ability to talk about it, particularly in school settings, um, it just opens the door for stuff like this. Uh, we certainly have ha- had <laughs> 
problematic teachers for the history of schools, right? We've had teachers who were segregationists, who were racists, who were neo-Nazis. Um, those positions were very often marginalized because what we said as a country is we're going to make our particular public school systems stand up for the rights of equity, stand up for the rights, especially after the Brown versus Board of Education decision, um, at least on in theory, at least the guiding ideology was that our schools should be springboards for people to be able to better their lives. And when we cut away those conversations, we kind of amplify the importance of weird stuff like this, where, I mean, think about how weird it is. Somebody can do all this crazy stuff in their private life, which is their right, um, but then they actually can't go in, that <laughs> you can't have a conversation about it in the school where they're teaching. So it's just a, it's an incredible moment for schools. I sure hope we come back to the ideals that we were, we've we been guided by before. Yeah, well said. And think about the irony of this, doctor. Literally, the school system is saying, racism, okay. Teaching about racist America, not. Exactly. All right. 